part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Worldwide, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report. This is July, a new month, so a new actor spotlight. I'm trying something new here. Got a new setup. I'm outside. Uh, maybe you'll hear some beautiful sounds of the outdoors, like some birds on a plane. And we'll look up in the sky together. But basically, it's just it's beautiful outside. I'm sitting on my closed-in porch here, and I'm just enjoying the weather. And why not do a little podcast and enjoy the weather? So, without further ado... We're going to talk about Melissa Benoist, and that's how I've heard her last name pronounced, and that's what we're going to do, and she played Supergirl from 2015 to 2021, and it seems so long ago, yet not so long ago, that Supergirl ended. So we're kind of getting into the more recent time of our actors, and we're almost, we're almost done, we have a few more left to go, but Melissa Marie Benoist is an American actress, singer, and dancer. She was born in Littleton, Colorado, the daughter of Julian Jim Benoist, a physician. Her parental grandfather was French descent. The rest of her ancestry was German, English, and Scottish. She started dance classes at the age of three. When she was four years old, her aunt put her in a church play she was directing. That's pretty awesome. Um, I had not previously seen anything with Melissa or knew anything about her acting skills prior to Supergirl. And this is one of those things, like, with several CW shows, I think Stephen Amell was one as well, maybe Grant Gustin, but was the very first of thousand actors to audition for the title role of Supergirl. (laughs) Just as Stephen Amell for Air and Grant for Flash. Was wearing an eye patch reportedly after suffering an eye injury when she first put on her Supergirl costume. It was later revealed by Melissa on Instagram that the injury was in fact caused by an incident of domestic abuse. As we know, her first husband appeared in season one as Supergirl, or in Supergirl, not as Supergirl, and then uh, later uh, she got a divorce and then ended up marrying Chris Wood, who played Monel on Supergirl. She became engaged to Chris on the 11th of February, 2019, one day before my birthday. In 2015, it was announced that she married uh, Glee co-star Blake Jenner, her, her first husband, and the couple separated in 2016 and divorced in 2017. So that's a whole relationship of marriage under two years. She started reading the New 52 Supergirl comic book title after landing the part, and both she and Helen Slater played Supergirl. Our brunettes turned blonde for the role. In September of 2020, she became a mother for the first time after giving birth to her son. She has three tattoos, a wolf on her left wrist, a feather, and the word free on the back of her neck and a bicycle on her foot. So, um, she was involved in the mental health awareness movement called I Don't Mind, which current partner Chris Wood, who played on... Uh, with current partner Chris Wood. She holds a record of playing the same character of Kara Danvers slash Supergirl in five different television series, technically. Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Batwoman. She made her directing debut in season five of Supergirl. So, all right. So what, as we get into like a little bit more about Melissa here, what were your thoughts just on her portrayal? Let us know in the comments. Let us know through social media of what you think made her a great or not great Supergirl. I have often said that her Supergirl was kind of in a weird existence because of how they paired her with and, and without Superman. And part of me almost had wished that they had just done basically 
a more traditional Superman story, but with her. So, you know, Superman had never come to Earth. Could have, it could have worked better. But, you know, what are you going to do? Right? What are you going to do? She went to Marymount Manhattan College. That's cool. Her, her first film appearance was Whiplash. And then the comedy drama Danny Collins in 2015, the crime company Band of Robbers in 2015, the romantic western The Longest Ride, the action 2015, the action thriller Patriot Day 2017, the drama Lowriders in 2016, the comedy Sun Dogs in 2017. And she betrayed the wife of cult leader David Korsh in the Paramount Network miniseries Waco in 2018. On stage, M- Melissa made her Broadway debut in 2018 as Carol King in jukebox musical Beautiful Carol King Music. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. She has two sisters, Jessica, a novelist, and Christine, an eco- ecologist, science, and five half siblings from her father's remarriage. She was raised mostly by her mother in the suburbs of Denver, Colorado, but was born in Houston, Texas. After her parents' separation, growing up in Colorado, a large part of her childhood was spent exploring national parks and immersing herself in nature. Hmm. As a teenager, Benoist performed anonymously at Disneyland in various melodies of musical songs for three summers with the Academy of Theater and Arts, a musical theater school she was attending, located in Littleton. That's pretty cool. Uh, she performed locally in a number of theatrical productions, including A Month in the Country, Cinderella, A Chorus Line, and Bye Bye Birdie. She performed the play Evita with her cast members at the former Country Dinner House. In 2006, the Denver Post named Benoist one of Colorado's five can't-miss kids. She graduated from high school in 2007 and then moved to New York City to pursue a career in music theater. She was initially attending Marymount Manhattan College, which we discussed. Let's see. Her first film was Tennessee in 2008, along with singer Mariah Carey. Oh, I never did see that one, but I remember it on the shelf of Blockbuster. She made guest appearances on shows like Law and Order, Criminal Intent, Blue Bloods, Homeland, and The Good Wife. While attending college, she played Kelly in the 2006 or 2011 Godspeed musicals, the production of the unauthorized biography of Samantha Brown. In, t- in May of 2012, she auditioned for the musical comedy drama Glee. And which I never saw, which I thought about watching after learning that Grant Gustin had come from Glee and having not any background on Grant prior to The Flash. And then, of course, she would do Glee and uh, some of the other things mentioned. She was in the Nicholas Sparks film adaptation, The Longest Ride. Which I'm pretty sure I saw all Nicholas Sparks movies are pretty much the same plot, but I don't remember and I don't remember her. Hmm, interesting. In 2015 is when October, the superhero adventure series Supergirl debuted with her as the lead. And in 2022, it was announced that Benoist and her production company, Three Kings Production, has renewed its overall deal with Warner Brothers Television Group and that she will f- officially join HBO Max series The Girls on the Bus, inspired by a chapter in Amy Kaczynski's 2018 novel Chasing Hillary, which was based on the author's time covering Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign as a political reporter. Wow. So Melissa has done some things. She is still coming up in her career, if you look at it. There's not a lot of background. I mean, she has a lot of theater work, which is always amazing. And um, she does appear on several soundtracks, including for Glee and the uh, Supergirl Crisis on Earth X and the Flash musical episode duets. So that's a quick kind of rundown spotlight on Melissa and her part as Cara Danvers, not Cara Danvers. So let us know what you think, and remember. Hey, 
We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. What's up in the sky? We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope podcast.